Hi, I'm Ruth Inasaje. We are broadcasting from the New Vision Newsroom. We'll take a look at the news around Uganda fast. We start off from Ribirizi district where 19 people died when a fuel truck barreled into the vehicles in a busy town and exploded. Police has said the blast occurred Sunday evening in the Chambra Trading Center, a mountainous area near the Queen Elizabeth National Park. Regional police spokesperson and Marshal Tumusimit said 10 people died instantly when the fuel truck lost control and hit three other vehicles, leading to multiple explosions that also burned 25 small shops. The similar incident happened a week ago in Tanzania, where over 70 people were burnt in a fuel tank explosion. A massive fireball engulfed a crowd thronging to collect petrol from an overturned tanker last Saturday near the town of Morogoro, some 200 kilometers west of Dar al Salaam. Let's move on to Iganga district where people whose relatives died yesterday in a car crash along the Mbali Turinia Highway in Busembate are frustrated with the motor attendants at Iganga Main Hospital. According to Jamana Chinto, a relative, she arrived at the motor at around 9.30 p.m. yesterday demanding to have the boat of her son, but the motor attendant instead demanded for 150,000 shillings. The chairperson, Iganga Hospital, to management committee Samobira when contacted confirmed receiving similar complaints from relatives of the deceased. He has instructed people put in such situations to report to police because demanding for money in order to receive a body is illegal at the hospital. News from the capital, Kampala. The State Minister for Investment and Privatization, Evelyn Anite, says she lives in fear since the exposure of the embattled telecom company, UTL Company. While addressing journalists this morning at the Finance Ministry office, Anita alleged that people she described as mafias want to end her life. She said she will soon make a statement at police concerning the life threats which involve tapping her phone calls and being followed by unknown people. Let's hear from her. The cabal, the cartel that is used to intimidating, robbing this country, they yet again plotting a move to kill me. They've been having meetings. in various offices, in Kampala Club, in the offices of uh, Uganda Registration Service Bureau. And they've recruited a group of young people and they're tapping my phone all the time. They have gone to MTN and got in printouts of my communications on what I do. They're trailing me. I have already alerted the police. But I want to tell you that if I die, do not look. Do not even ask that there must be a postmortem done because you already know the killers. Yes, they're watching New Vision TV news around Uganda. We move on to Pakwach district where the police are holding nine suspected Congolese army men who have been terrorizing fishermen on Lake Albert shared by Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Frank Muzora, the Pakwach district police commander, said the men wearing Congolese army uniform were netted on Sunday in a joint operation by the police and the army as they tried to flee back to Congo after robbing fishermen the previous night. He said the joint operation was conducted following several complaints from fishermen, especially at a day landing site in Pakwachi district over the presence of the gunmen who have reportedly been robbing and extorting money from them. According to Muzora, they were able to seize two guns with 59 rounds of ammunition during the operation. 
News from Bunyoro region in an effort to improve the performance of primary schools in the region, 1.3 billion shillings have been pumped into 100 schools. A local organization known as Lean Community Development has invested in schools in Hoima, Bulisa and Chukube. 34 schools are supposed to come from Hoima, 35 schools from Chukube, and then the 31 schools from Bulisa. The total project fund is about 1 billion 373 million for the three years. Olak, the program manager, said 54,000 pupils and 1,100 teachers in the three districts will benefit from the three-year project called School Transformation through enriching accountability and resilience. However, the Bulisa District Education Officer, Christopher Chenka, urged parents to invest in their children unlike doing things that do not suit their academic qualifications. They're in the witchcraft tree, they're <laughs> And now, for all these years, that school is giving us great ones. So we need to change. We need really to do what? Change. Hopes are high in Bunyoro region with the 1.3 billion shillings available for the improvement of the schools. Yes, they're watching New Vision TV News with me, Ruth, and I said, yeah, we continue looking at more stories making news around Uganda from Mayugi district. A couple is in dear need of help to raise uh, their week old triplets. 70 year old Hamisi Babalanda and 40 year old Zaina Namoya, who are already parents of seven children, say they cannot afford clothes to keep their triplets warm. Residents of Mvunywa village in Chigandalo sub-county say they have to use papyrus mats to cover them when it gets too cold. Babalanda sells firewood and earns less than 4,000 shillings a day. The bills to cater for his family keep rising. Now the parents of 10 children seek aid from well-wishers. This is from Agago district where Kalongo Technical Institute is becoming a pull factor for many students after it abandoned the old structures that were built when it was established in 1983. The 5 billion facility constructed with funding from Kuwait government can now accommodate 120 girls and has a staff quarters, a, labor a library and a computer laboratory installed with 16 new computers. Sitting on a 30 34.7 acres. The institute has two workshops for mechanics and agriculture fitted with tractors, a motorcycle and car engines for training. Buka Okada, the institute's principal, said the funding was realized after writing a proposal to create government through the education ministry. Story reminding you of the Twins Festival. Now triplets Samuel Anguma, Esther Ashaba and Solva Guma had a paradoxical childhood. They were intensely close to each other and did everything together. But they were also confrontational towards each other. Ashaba gives an interesting testimony. She says they used to fight every time. They mainly fought over television programs. She used to like cartoons while Anguma and Baguma preferred soccer and this would spark off a fight. Their mom had to be attentive all the time, ready to separate and reconcile them in case they started to fight. Despite their confrontational disposition, Aguma, Asheba, and Baguma related closely and did many things together. They also shared each other's joys and pains. Now, the sixth edition of the Twins Festival is happening this Sunday, the 25th of August, at Nambole Stadium. You'll meet the triplets. Mm -hmm.